So by popular demand, we're rebuilding all City. They're currently 16th in the championship. And I have to be honest, taking a look at that squad, I'm surprised they're not lower. We do have a couple of players on loan to us who are in the starting 11, the likes of Dimitrios Palkas and the likes of Nathan Baxter, which will have to be sorted out at some point. I do like the looks of Harvey Yale, 18 years old, 63 rated overall. I might have to purchase him for a permanent deal. We do have a potential superstar in the making with 66 rated 17 year old Morgan Ryan. Maybe he's not ready for the starting 11 just yet, where he could definitely go out on loan. And to begin this journey with Hull City, the board have given us £7 million to spend to try and get this team back on track. And after taking a very in-depth look at the team, I decided it was the defensive lineup that was letting them down. That's why I went for fullback Gabriel Fuentes for £1.7 million, as well as bringing in American centre-back Eric Palmer-Brown for just over £2 million as well to shore up that defensive lineup. I then decided to sign Harvey Vale on a permanent deal for five years, not before sending him out on loan to Genoa for two years. And our youth academy prospect Morgan Ryan has been sent out on loan to Besiktas. And after messing around with the team, this is what it looks like. We've gone for a 4-3-3 attacking variation. It makes the most sense when you've got two pretty well-rounded centre midfielders there. They can be the only midfielders, whilst Palcast does all the attacking work with our front three. I'd actually argue compared to the default start in 11 to now, this team looks ridiculously stronger. Obviously, the back four are a bit of a hit and miss, but we've got a lot of time to improve that. It's just a matter of now seeing how we do in our first season in the Champions. And all the way through the season, we do find ourselves just outside the top six. We're literally outside the top six due to goal difference. I mean, battery isn't low, shut up. Promotion is definitely on the cards this year, though. And just to update you guys, this is the development and progress of our start and 11. Significant improvement in our left and right wingers, Longman and Sinnott. They are just ridiculous this season. We definitely need to improve this back four, no matter what happens at the end of this season, whether we get promoted or not, because that back four is just not good enough. But with us just being outside the playoffs it is looking pretty damn good so far well boys we've arrived at the end of this season and unfortunately we just missed out on a playoff position we finished seventh in the league we were literally one goal difference away from being in the top six man that is actually heartbreaking but when we go to the top of the table we see Watford and Norwich go up automatically Watford absolutely stormed this championship Jesus Christ then in the playoffs it was Middlesbrough Sheffield United Burnley and Coventry City but at the other end of the table it was Sunderland, Blackpool and Rotherham who unfortunately got relegated. And it is indeed Burnley joining Watford and Norwich back in the Premier League after beating Middlesbrough 2-0 in the playoff promotional final. Liverpool went on to win the FA Cup, with United beating Liverpool to win the Carabao Cup. Then Villarreal won the Conference League, with Juve beating Roma to win the Europa League. And it was the battle of the oil teams, but Man City came out on top. Stats-wise, boys, as you can see, it's not overly that impressive. The impressive thing is, is the growth of Ryan Longman almost 10 overall growth this season 76 rated 22 years old stats wise though like i've just said it's a bit shocking but growth wise it's phenomenal it definitely does bode well for us going into season two knowing how well we've progressed in terms of growth going into season two it's very obvious where we need to improve we need a new goalkeeper and we definitely need a new right back once we sort that out i've got a very good feeling we can get promotion this year we've also been given 11 million pound to spend to make this happen this time i started the transfer winning by selling on striker Benjamin Tete for just under 5 million. He wanted out of the club and I couldn't do anything about it. We then brought in two players that will massively help our defensive lineup, starting with goalkeeper Mads Hermansen for just over 5 million and German fullback Felix Agu for just over 5 million as well. Leaving the team looking like this. Now I'm pretty certain that this team is definitely capable of promotion, maybe even automatic promotion. But that is one thing we'll have to wait until the end of the season to find out. With Hull's team getting stronger every single season, I wanted to test to see how good they really were in the championship and what better team to do that against than Southampton there was only one team in this game Southampton were hanging on by a thread but we finally broke them down in the end oh Longman he's through he's through Longman to make it 1-0 Finally! Oh my god, it has taken us 40 minutes, so many chances, but we have finally broken the deadlock with a beautiful goal from Lukeman on the right-hand side of the pitch. And after we got our first goal, everything just clicked. Sink. Oh my god, please, 2-0. There we go. What a bit of play that was. We make it 2-0 against a newly demoted Premier League side. I'm telling you, boys, we have created a very good team here. 3-0, lovely stuff, 3-0, 70th minute in, Southampton are in the mud and we are definitely on the rise. 
Oh, bloody hell, fire. This is just raining goals now. But it wouldn't be a good win rebuild if I took a 4-0 lead and then conceded one about 10 minutes before the game ended. Oh, come on, man. Can I go one game without conceding? There we have it, boys. A very convincing win. 4-1 against Southampton. Let's be honest, are a pretty strong team. And if we're beating them, we've got a strong chance of getting promoted. And boys, it is definitely looking good because we are in the top six. We're comfortably in the top six we are third in the league and we're definitely chasing automatic promotion and ironically enough the team above us is the team that we just taught a lesson to in football Southampton I think this season is gonna have a very interesting end to it and just to update you guys this is how the team is currently looking there's a lot of progression in the team everybody's looking pretty good even the defensive lineups looking pretty sick if we don't get promotion this season there's something wrong with this game we have arrived at the end of this season and we are in the Premier League once again with all City we have finished second We've just beaten Nottingham Forest to that second spot by four points. Palace ran away with it in the end with 106 points. But the important thing is we are in the Premier League in season three. But who was joining us from the playoffs? Is it Nottingham Forest, Southampton, Sheffield United, or will it be West Brom? But we already know who's going down. That will be Wigan, Reading, and Luton Town. And joining ourselves in Crystal Palace, it will be Nottingham Forest beating Southampton 2-1 in the playoff final. With Liverpool beating Palace in the FA Cup final, as well as City beating the Bottle Jobs in the Carabao Cup final. Feyenoord went on to win the Europa League and you wonder why I call them the bottle jobs. City won the Super Cup as well as winning the Champions League. S2 Penan stepped up this year. 39 goals, 3 assists from 54 games. 42 goal contributions in 54 games. That is outrageous stuff. Then you got Sin at going to 77 rated, 17 goals, 11 assists. Not bad, but not good at the same time. Ryan Longman didn't do too bad either. 78 rated at this stage in his career with 15 goals and 13 assists. Again, not good, but not bad at the same time. Ozan, two fans 76 rated with 10 goals and 6 assists that's not bad at all I'm feeling pretty confident going into the Premier League we need to make sure though that our back four and goalkeeper is solid as possible otherwise we're just going to get battered starting season 3 like I've just said to you guys at the end of season 2 we are going to make sure that, that back four and goalkeeper is as solid as possible and if we have any money left over we'll go into the midfield but for now our defence and goalkeeper is the priority and to be fair the board have been pretty generous giving us 58 million to spend on working on this team this season and I still Started that transfer window by once again sending Harvey Vale out on loan for another two years because I don't think he's ready quite yet for the Premier League. I then wanted to bring in a very experienced keeper at the top level of football. That's why I opted for Peter Gulashi for just over 5.5 million. I then wanted two centre backs who knew the Premier League inside and out. That's why I went for Diego Carlos from Aston Villa for just under 20 million and Eric Dyer from Tottenham Hotspur for just over 15 million. Which makes the team look like this going into our debut season in the top flight of English football, the Premier League. And as you can see, there are a couple of things that I have changed. The first couple of things being the goalkeeper and the two centre-backs. They are staying there for the remainder of the season. And on top of that, our new striker is Morgan Ryan, who was originally a winger. We converted him to a striker. He went up to 79 rated. No brainer. I personally think this squad is going to surprise a lot of teams in the Premier League. And with this being our debut season in the Premier League with Hull City, I wanted this slightly easier opponent to choose from other than likes of the top six. So I opted for the yo, -Yo team themselves Norwich City and to be honest I was glad it was Norwich because 24 minutes in we conceded oh no oh my god that defending is atrocious Diego Carlos and Eric Dyer, I'm disappointed in you pair. But conceding that goal really woke us up because we started playing some seriously good football and then finally we got our goal please finally oh my god God, that has been coming all freaking game. We finally take our chance. Morgan Ryan slots it into the bottom left-hand corner of the goal, and we make it one all. And after what can only be described as persistent attacking, we got our second. What a ball. Try or a... Oh, my God. Head on that. Oh, my God. What? Oh, my God. Ryan. Finally. Oh, my God. From the crossbar. We kept it alive somehow, we played it around and we got it on Ryan's left foot in it's bottom left. Once again, we take the lead early in the second half. But it was clear our defence was our weakness. Oh my god, no. Oh, you are joking. One ball, one through ball. Splits our defensive partnership apart, man. Norwich, I swear to God, you are the luckiest team I've ever played against. But in the 60th minute, we finally put the game to bed. Oh my god, what a through ball. Ryan, on your left. And he gets his hat trick against Norwich City. But then this happened. Oh my god. Oh my god. 
This defending is woeful. Our defence, even though we brought in Eric Dyer and Diego Carlos, it is still absolutely diabolical. Boys, when you score three goals in a game and you still don't get the three points, it's not the attackers, it is the defenders that are the problem. And quite honestly speaking, after playing with this team, we are going to be lucky to stay out of that relegation zone. While we're halfway through the season, and to my utter surprise, we are inside the top six in the Premier League in our opening season. Do not ask me how we pulled that one off. I still can't wrap my head around that. But the fact that we're there after that performance against Norwich is astounding to me. And just to update you guys a little bit, the team looks like this going into the second half of this season. Our front three look absolutely brilliant. We're definitely going to have to sort this midfield out next year because Seri, 74 rated, 33 years old, He's definitely dwindling in overall. Hopefully at the end of the season, we can remain where we are and maintain our spot at least in the top 10. While we are at the end of the season, and I knew it was a little bit of a flip that we were in the top six, we've gone back down the pecking order and we've had a bit of a reality check. We are 13th in the league at the end of the season. And to be fair, I'm actually kind of happy with that. I mean, top 10 was a little bit of a pipe dream, but we just don't have the quality in the team yet to confidently say that we can finish in the top 10. But 13th place for the first season in the Prem isn't bad at all. City beat Liverpool to the title by three points and it was Chelsea who finished third and then everybody else who was just nowhere near the top three. And in the bottom three it was Brentford, Leeds United and Norwich. But we did end up beating the bottle jobs themselves to win the FA Cup. I swear I will never not call them the bottle jobs. The amount of finals these guys lose, even in FIFA, is ridiculous. Well, I think that's the definition of speaking too soon, isn't it? Real Sociedad won the Europa Conference League, with Milan winning the Europa League, City won the Super Cup, and PSG this time won the Champions League. I have to admit, boys, Morgan Ryan is an absolute ball. At 20 goals, 3 assists in his opening season for Hull City. 47 games played as well, not bad at all. Ryan Longman's really beginning to surprise me. 13 goals, 9 assists, 80 rated at 24 years old. This guy's not bad at all. I'm trying to keep this guy for the end game team. We've got Ozan Tufan, 77 rated, 12 goals, 10 assists as well with our other winger, Cynic, 11 goals, 4 assists, not bad. Definitely want more from this guy next season. But in our first season in the Premier League, we finished 13th and we win the FA Cup beating the bottle jobs to do it. So all in all, it's a W. Now going into season four of this rebuild, I'm leaving that front three alone. There is nothing wrong with that front three. Cynic, Ryan and Longman are doing just fine. I think it's now time to work on that midfield and try to shore up the fullbacks if we've got the spare money. And we've being given just over 50 million pounds to spend this year so we've definitely got a good amount of money the only thing we did in that transfer was bring in turkey center defensive midfielder Salih ozkan for just over 32 million leaving the team looking like this now as you can see i've definitely switched things up a little bit the first one being harvey vale is back in the team i've called him back off his loan a little bit early because he's decent now he's ready for the premier league we do have a little bit of money left over in the second transfer window so we're gonna have to see when the time comes what we can do with that money but for now this team looks pretty solid it's pretty well rounded there's a couple of weaknesses don't get me wrong however i do strongly believe we'll do better this season in the premier league as well as that though due to us winning the fa cup we are in the europa league in only our second season in the premier league how about that we are in group e joined by traps on sports Sparta praha and sham rock rovers now our team isn't exactly strong as a knock yet so there could be a chance that we go third and go into the europa conference league or even worse go fourth in this freaking group however i do think think we have got the strength to go to the round of 16. Well, we didn't finish top of the group, but we did make it to the prelim round of the Europa League, which I'm actually kind of happy with, to be honest, because with the team that we've got, we could have very easily finished third because this team is actually the group of death in the Europa League. But the team that we are facing in the prelim round is Sporty. Oh my God, that is just ridiculous. How are you going to put us up against Sporty? However, over in the Premier League, we ain't doing too well at all. With 12th place in the league, it's not been the best of starts for us, winning six drawing six and losing eight we definitely need to pick up some form in the second half of this season and in my opinion we made a pretty big move in that transfer window bringing in turkey's fullback foodie kadiar glue for just over 10 million including our left back fuentes as a part of that deal which leaves the team looking like this going into the rest of this season and i'm telling you now this team is better than 13th place in my opinion we definitely need to buck our ideas up we've almost sorted this defense out but at the same time we haven't because eric dyer is 32 and diego Car Carlos is 32, so we will have to look for centre-backs pretty soon, as well as a goalkeeper, because Gulashi is almost 36 as well. But boys, even though our form in the Premier League is questionable at best, we have somehow made it to yet another FA Cup final, this time against Everton. We have a genuine shot at getting back-to-back -back FA Cup trophies, but can the boys in orange pull it off? And thanks to a massive blunder by Pickford, we took a 1-0 lead inside the first five minutes.
Oh, oh my god, no way! <laughs> That's our Ringland number one right there. Jordan Pickford making a massive blunder inside the three-minute mark to give us a 1-0 lead. And quite honestly, Everton turned into a Sunday league team after that first goal because we absolutely destroyed them, scoring goal after goal after goal. Vale with two, Morgan Ryan with two, Everton are in the bin. And there we have it, boys, for the second season running. We win the FA Cup back-to-back -back by absolutely destroying Everton. 4-0 in the final. You can say what you want about the Premier League, but when it comes to domestic cups like the FA Cup, we are on fire and we're about to lift our trophy for the second time. And there it is. The FA Cup belongs to Hull City once again. But speaking of the Premier League, let's go see how badly we did. We actually didn't do too bad in the Premier League. We finished smack bang mid-table. And to be honest, I'm actually kind of happy with that considering last season we finished 13th, I believe. This season we finished 10th and it's progression even if it is small. Man City once again won the Premier League. It was a bit closer this time with Manchester United hot on their tails, but nevertheless it still goes to City. In the bottom three this time are Watford, Burnley and Fulham. And as you all know, we slapped Everton in the FA Cup final. Nope. Ajax won the Conference League. AC Milan once again won the Europa League. PSG won the Super Cup with Inter Milan winning the Champions League. Wow, this guy is improving. Summit rotten and he is smashing the Premier League. 35 goals, 12 assists, 55 games, 87 rated at 20 one years old. There's dynamic potential back or something now. Bobby Vale growing six overall this season. 79 rated, 15 goals, five assists. Not bad at all for his first start as a whole city player. Then you got Cynic 81 rated, 10 goals, eight assists with Longman gain eight and four. Ozcan from the CDM roll gain six and two as well, in fairness. Improving our position in the Premier League as well as getting back-to-back -back FA Cups. This team is actually really goddamn underrated in my opinion. Next season, we're going to have to make sure that we shore up some positions, replace the old with new and then go from there. So as we're to season five, we do have quite a bit of things to work out. For starters, we have two centre backs over 32 years old. We have a goalkeeper who's definitely nearing the end of his career. We also have a CDM role to fill in as well as a fullback. And to be fair, we've got a bit of money, 65 million to spend this season to sort all of our issues out. The first thing that we did in that transfer window was scout a youngster by the name of Matty Hoffman and he was on a free, so I snapped him right up. I then decided to sell on both of our centre backs first Eric Dyer for just under 30 million, as well as Diego Carlos for just over 15 million because we were both getting on and it was time to let them go. I then went on to sign Turkish goalkeeper Ugur Kansakir for just over 24 million because, like I've just said, Peter Gulashi is on his last legs of his career. I'm replacing Eric Dyer and Diego Carlos out of that centre back position as Italian centre back Nicolo Casali for just over 35 million, and already Premier League experienced centre back Christopher Agier for just over 27 million. We also picked up youngster Martin Fatik on a free not before sending him back out on loan to Real Madrid. And this is now how the team looks after that transfer window. Now obviously the centre midfielder position and the right back position definitely do still need work. However Hoffman, he's only 17 years old, he's got buckets of potential as well and we're dead lucky we got him on a free. But in my opinion this is a humongous step forward in the right direction because our centre backs in my opinion are better than Diego Carlos and Eric Dyer. Our goalkeeper is definitely better than Gulashi is right now. I think this is the year we actually make strides in Europe. And due to the fact that we once again won the FA Cup last season. We are once again in the Europa League. We are in Group E, joined by Fenerbahce, SK Sturmgras and Sham Rock Rovers. And to be honest with the team that we've got now, I'm quite confident to say that we can wipe the floor with this group. Well, I think this group stage is the definition of two-horse race. Ourselves and Fenerbahce ran away with it. We're in the prelim round, whilst Fenerbahce get to the round of 16. And our opponent in the preliminary round is Porto. You know what? I actually fancy chances against that. Meanwhile, in the Premier League, we are making strides. Don't get me wrong, but we're not quite there just yet. Newcastle United and Everton and Wolves as well are above us. They are in the top six. Oh my God, this career mode is absolutely nuts. Just to keep you guys updated, this is how the team looks going into the second half of this season. Literally the only weakness is our right back a goo, but we will have that sorted out next season. But this team is finally coming together very goddamn nicely and I can't wait to see how well we've done at the end of the season. I was right to be excited because we made yet another final of Hull City, this time the Europa League final and our opponents, Newcastle United. It was going to go back to England one way or the other, but which part of England? Newcastle or Hull City? And almost instantly we got the first goal. 
Oh my god, please, first shot, first goal, three minutes in, we take the lead. And the beautiful dink into the box gets us the second goal. Oh, go on, oh my god, the link up play between Vale and Morgan Ryan, what a goal that was. We ended up scoring two more goals before the first 45 minutes had even ended. Oh my god, we are 4-0 up, and it's not even half time yet. But on this channel, we can just never keep a clean sheet, can we? Oh, come on, man. That's just shocking. But the second half certainly had a surprising start to it. <laughs> what a tackle. B.A., that was not a penalty. What? Red card? Are you joking? Saki, it's all on you. Be the hero. Yes! Have that, you corrupt piece of shit referee. And I'll be honest, after the red card, we were shocking defensively, but our goalkeeper, Saki, was absolutely amazing. Oh, what a save. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. We have won our first piece of European silver where we have won the Europa League despite going down to 10 men through a very, very dodgy referee's decision. Good win, it was a penalty. Shut up. Finally, boys, after back-to-back -back FA Cups, we finally get our hands on some European silverware. Now all that's left to do this season is to see how we've done elsewhere. I really don't get it, guys. How can we do so well in the FA Cup and the Europa League, but do so shit in the Premier League? We finished smack bang mid table again. And with the team now it is right now, I can't see where we're going wrong. Even Forrest finished above us. Once again, Manchester City ran away with it in the end. Five points go to second place Liverpool. Ironically enough, we beat third place Newcastle United in the Europa League final. And they played absolutely terribly. So, realistically speaking, I don't know where we're going wrong. But in the bottom three, it was Brentford, Brighton and West Brom. We did actually get to the FA Cup final once again. This time we got bested by Chelsea 4-1. West Ham won the Carabao Cup. Borussia Munch and Gladbach won the Conference League. As you all know, we won the Europa League, getting us Champions League football for next season, no matter what. AC Milan won the Super Cup, and PSG won the Champions League. Oh my God, Morgan Ryan got 55 goal contributions in 62 games. This man had an absolutely insane season this time. He's gone up to 88 rated, 22 years old. Absolutely insane stuff with Harvey Vale, 82 rated now. 31 goal contributions, 60 games for a cam is ridiculous. Ryan Longman, 84 rated now with 13 goals, 16 assists, not bad at all. Senek, he's the weak link in the front four ends. He may be something to look at next season, but he did get 12 goals and 8 assists this season. Boys, our front four have carried us this season. If only everywhere else on the pitch could perform as good as them, we may actually finish in the top four. As we enter this season, it's very clear where we need to improve. We need a new right back. And in my opinion, I think we may need a new left winger as well because Senik, whilst he's been here from the start, we may need to improve that position because he's definitely the weakest out of the front four. And we've been given £96 million due to our success in the Europa League last season to sort this team out and get it ready. Ready for the Champions League. And our first point of action in that transfer was bringing in Turkish fullback Red Van Yilmaz for just over 23 million. And I said to you guys I wanted a better winger, and that's exactly what I got. We brought in Callum Hudson Odoi away from Chelsea for 42 million. And now the team looks like this. We converted Yilmaz from a left back to a right back. Everywhere on this pitch looks solid. The subs bench could do with a little bit of work, but with the money that we've been allocated so far, there's only so much you can actually do. But to be honest, all things considered, I think this team is more more than ready for the Champions League. And speaking of, we are in Group E, joined by AC Milan, Ajax and Fenerbahce. Now, AC Milan beat Inter Milan to win the Super Cup last year, so I know for a fact they'll have a pretty decent team. Ajax, I'm not too sure about Fenerbahce. I'm pretty sure they won't have a team as good as ours, but I will put my money on us getting into the round of 16 regardless. Well, boys, it looks like Europe's our playground this season, because in Group E, we topped the table. Three points go of AC Milan, who do join us in the round of 16. Ajax go to the Europa League. Fenerbahce, rock, bottom of the table. We're in the round of 16, like I've just said. We're facing off against Bayern Munich. Oh my God, that's a baptism by fire, that is. And in fairness, guys, we are actually killing it for once. In the Premier League, we're top four halfway through this season. Maybe we have cracked the code in this team and maybe this is the season we actually do well in the Premier League. And boys, this is how the team looks after the halfway point this season has arrived and this team looks freaking phenomenal. There's no weaknesses at all in this team. The subs bench is looking a little bit better. We did recall Vitek from his low move just in case one of our centre-backs do get injured or suspended because that normally happens to us, doesn't it? But even though we're up against Bayern Munich in the round of 16, I genuinely believe 
we've got a team that can beat them. We entered the round of 16 full of confidence that we could actually pull a result against Bayern Munich in the first leg. We do end up drawing one all, but it was still a very positive start. Well, that suspension curse is caught up with us already. Didn't waste its time, did it? Round of 16, second leg, and Casali is out of this game. Luckily, we did recall Vitic from his lone move to Real Madrid, but it's definitely left us at a disadvantage going up against Bayern Munich. We're just going to have to wait and see if a miracle's about to happen, and it does! Ryan and Longman, 2 0. We're into the quarters. And these knockout stages didn't get any easier as Longman was out on a suspension and we were up against European Giants Liverpool. It was definitely going to be a difficult tie. Unfortunately, the first leg, though, we did lose 2 1. Our Champions League journey was in very big danger of getting cut short by Liverpool, but we'd come too far and we progressed too much to let this happen. I knew that it was going to take something special to break the deadlock, and then this happened. Oh my god. Oh, ho, 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 oh my god, Morgan Ryan with the goal. Oh my god, what a strike. And then we ended up doubling our lead just on the stroke of the 20 minute mark. Oh my god, surely, 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 surely. Oh no, oh no. Oh my god, thank you. We deserve that. Oh my god. Morgan takes it around Allison, has two shots, comes to Hudson to do it, and he buries it into an open net. This whole city team was absolutely unstoppable, and we genuinely could not stop scoring goals against Liverpool. <laughs> But in true Godwin fashion, we ended up conceding. Oh, bloody hell, fire. Okay, it's one back. But we all know how slippery this road can be. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Oh, bloody hell. But it was our youth academy player who sealed the deal once and for all. To finish the game off completely, there we go. Six goals to two. Surely to God, this is the game put to bed. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. We have swept Liverpool aside like they're nothing. 7-2 on the night, 8-4 on aggregate. We are into the semi-finals very comfortably. We definitely didn't have an easy ride in the knockouts because next up was Spanish giant Atletico Madrid away from home in the first leg. But we do actually pick up a two-all draw to take into the second leg of this tie. Moment of truth, boys. Two all on aggregate. Are we going to get ourselves in the Champions League Final, come on, come on, we've done it, we're in the Champions League final, we've beaten Atletico Madrid and we are in the Champions League final. And boys, we are meeting up with PSG in the Champions League final, it seems like lately we are meeting up with them a lot in the Champions League final, but it is what it is, before we get into the final, I want to see if we have actually done well in the Premier League this time. We finally made some headway in the Premier League, we finished third place this season, we were nowhere near the top of the table, Manchester United, we finally got the better of Man City, they were six points clear of us, but at the end of the day guys, we have gone from mid-table to top four in the span of one season, which is incredible. And in the bottom three, it was Southampton, Fulham and Norwich. Nope. Liverpool went on to win the Carabao Cup, with West Ham winning the Conference League, RC Salta went on to win the Europa League, and we won the Super Cup beating PSG to do it, so can history repeat itself? Our front four have been truly unstoppable this season. Over 40 goal contributions for Morgan Ryan, over 30 goal contributions for Ryan Longman, over 30 goal contributions for Hudson, Adoy as well, and Harvey Vale, just under 20 goal contributions as well for him. It has been one hell of a season. It's true that in this rebuild, we have tasted success quite a bit with Hull City. We haven't done that well in the Premier League. However, we have a chance to do even better and win the Champions League, knocking PSG off their pedestal as the best team in the freaking world. The question the question is, can the boys in orange actually do it? And we couldn't have started this final off any better if we tried. Oh my god, that's a ball. That's a great ball. He's in. Long man is in. Oh, there we go. That's what we want to see. First shot, first goal, six minutes in. But then PSG got one back almost straight away. Oh my god, that's a great ball. And he's going to square it. Yeah, there it is. There it is. For God's sake. But Morgan Ryan in this game was absolutely unstoppable. Come on, Morgan Ryan. There we go. What a strike from Ryan. Go on, please. Oh my god, that all came from Morgan Ryan. What a run, what a pass, and what a freaking goal. Oh my god, boys, we could run away with it here. We could run away with it. We could run away with it. Oh, come on. Hey! Morgan Ryan's having a field day against PSG's defence. I have to admit at this point, I was a little bit nervous. 
Oh my god, no. Not like this. Not like I swear to god. All we have to do is hold on for three minutes and we're done. We have won the Champions League. We need to hold on for three minutes. I can't believe it. Literally nothing else has happened in this often than that happens. Well, boys, it was squeaky bum time for a second there. But we have won the Champions League. We have won the Champions League with Hull City. We beat PSG 4-3 in the Champions League final. Oh my god. God, it's been a journey with these boys, hasn't it? This was so highly requested from you guys. I had to get it done. But that is where this video has come to an end. If you have enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, smash the hello to that subscribe button if you are new around here. Make sure you turn that notification bell and so you never miss a video I upload. We are on the road to 7,000 subscribers and we want to hit it before the end of 2022. That's all from me. It's been your boy, Gordon. Hope you guys have an amazing afternoon. And until next time, I'll see you later.